G'day and welcome to Talk of the Town for another week to the Port Adelaide Premiership Champion. G'day, Warren Treadray. G'day, we're undercover here today, hiding in the bedroom. It's all good. <laughs> From <laughs> Melbourne, stage four lockdown, a place where as of midnight tonight, Sam McClure, you won't be able to get a haircut. It's the Chief Football Reporter for the Nine Network. Yeah, which is it's sad news for everyone, really. If I can't get a haircut and you have to look at this thing growing, it's just going to look even worse. But, Treaders, I was just going to say, before we start, can you just do this for me? Just do that. Oh, oh, that. Oh, that's, oh, that's Dr. Oh, Evil. That is dead set. Oh, one Please. million dollars. <laughs> one million dollars. <laughs> Uh, no, let's move right on to our first topic of the day with the Tiger Power forwards are roaring back into contention last night. Jack Rewald, Tom Lynch, seven goals between them and the Tigers smashing the Lions by 41 points up in Queensland. Treaders, uh, they're right back in the hunt now. Well, I think they were right back in the hunt a couple of weeks ago when they beat GWS, did they? Or they fall just short? I can't remember. But what I saw that night, they were very, very good. Their midfielder's back. Dusty's back. Once Dusty back, everyone follows. And look at even Big Lynch and uh, Jack are sort of cashing in. So uh, you always felt that once Richmond settled themselves in the hub, that they were too good just to fall away from the season. And they had to win last night to really stay in touch with that you know, top eight that's really taking some shape. So I think, if anything, there was a performance that stamped themselves on the competition. It was last night. It was brilliant. It's taken some getting used to in the hub for Richmond. A couple of visits to the spa and they feel a lot better now, apparently. The Tigers... Ouch. Uh, <laughs> no, well, just, you know, apparently that's what's been going on. Now, Sam, to you, are the Tigers the only Victorian team who can realistically win it? No, I wouldn't go that far yet. I still think Collingwood are a red-hot chance. You know, they've had some injuries. They've had some off-field dramas. Um, I still think they'll make the eight. And it's going to be one of those years where I think a team um, outside the four is, is as good a chance, really, as a team in the four of, of winning, like we saw in the Bulldogs in 2016. Um, but I, I'm more fascinated with the emergence of the younger players, Treaders, at Richmond. Um, I didn't realise that they have the depth that they do. You know, I was going through the, the numbers before. You think about a team like GWS... Uh, and GWS and Richmond, you know, have had similar levels of success in as far as where they've finished on the ladder in the last four years. But the Giants have had all these players going out. Rory Lobb, Dylan Shear, Will Setterfield, Caleb Marchback. And so they keep tapping up, tapping into the draft. You know, they keep having top 10 picks. Richmond just don't have that at all. I think Dan Rioli and Higgins are the two um, highest that they've got at 15 and 17 in the last five years. And yet, what about this depth? They're the third younger side in the last month. Um, and they showed up a premiership contender. I thought it was a brilliant performance last night. And Noah Bolter, Damien Hardwick said he reminded him of a young Alex Rance. We all scoffed. Jeez, I'm not sure how much longer we'll be scoffing for after last night. Well, that's what happens when you put something. Is, before we get you to react, just take a look at this. Because what we're seeing here is the Tigers that aren't in this team that rolled over the second place Lions. Asprey, amazing. Paddy, yep. Nankervis, Prestia, Edwards, and of course, Hooley, who's still adjusting in quarantine. Some premiership names in there, and yet this side is still finding a way to win and win big. Yeah, well, and I think the other challenge too is, you mentioned those names. When then Kervis went down, I was like, oh, here we go. Because he's been so important for Richmond the last few years, yep. particularly in their premiership years. But what they've been able to do in the ruck has been quite unbelievable too. Because as you mentioned, you know, you touched on then, Sam, that players who don't get an opportunity are so hungry. And anyone who's been a part of a team that's up the top or winning premierships or close to, you don't get an opportunity to blood the guys you'd like to. Say, for example, like an Adelaide are doing, like Melbourne are doing, you're getting a decent look at your list because you're winning most games and you're only probably giving away three or four of those opportunities per week to young kids. What is a great example is with all those injuries out, they're able to go, hey, let's give these guys a go. And they're just chomping at the bit to get an opportunity and they've proven it. And what they've done in the ruck has actually added a bigger dimension than what uh, Nan Kervis used to give them. He never used to win hit outs, but he'd be super competitive and he'd get win clearances and get around the ground. But what they're doing with the rucks are actually resting for kicking goals, creating opportunities. And I think Richmond has got another dimension or an extra leg to their game, which is just quite unbelievable considering they've had so much success over the past few years. Trez, can I just ask you, as someone that's been to the top um, and stayed there for a while, does, does what Richmond are achieving right now, does that add another layer of success to Damien Hardwick? Like, I know that he's already been there and won it twice, but the fact that they're still able to play the, the way that they're playing with all these guys missing and these kids coming through who aren't top 10 picks, does that heighten, you think, the prestige in which Hardwick will be held? 
I think so. And I don't get caught about the prestige. I just look at the evolution of his playing list. And, and he's got a job to yep. do. As much as we look back and go, oh, Clarkson will be one of the greatest coaches of all time. He is. He already is. Hardwick already is. You've got two premierships. You're in that, that stratosphere of being a senior coach. Don't forget that not so long ago, people were questioning whether he could actually coach. What he's able to do is evolve. And I think the beauty of that is he's able to keep his best players available. Rance is gone. Arguably one of the best defenders in the last decade or his generation. You know, before Matthew Scarlett, probably he you know, was probably the dominant one. He took over the role. He's now gone. So we've seen other players come in, Asprey play a role, Grimes step up in different roles. But at the end of the day, he's got his key players at the top of him. You know, we talk about Martin before. He's flicked the switch again. You know, I mean, he's playing a ripping football. Jack Rewalt's back in town. Lynch is back in town. You know, you talk about Soldo. You talk about all these different players. You know, Edwards has ha- hardly been around this year. Presti have hardly been around. But when they come back in, they're able to play their optimum. And I think that is credit to the coach to keep their senior players stimulated on edge and performing on game day. And that's why they're a red-hot chance of winning their, what, their third in four years. They're a fun team to talk about the Tigers and we could go on about them but for the entire program. Quickly before we move on, Treaders, Tommy Lynch, uh, one of his tackles under a bit of scrutiny. Do you think he'll miss a game or, or any play because of that act? Well, when I last night I saw it in the flash, I thought that's a week because it's clearly intentional. It's clearly high, and um, but it's minimal contact. So you'd think that that sits on a week, but it is open hand. So I'd suggest he gets a fine. And I think the AFL's got a great opportunity to stamp that out. There was a similar one happened between the Port and Giants game a few years ago, a few weeks ago. Todd Marshall caught one in the back of the head. We don't want to see that. It's just a cheap shot. So I think they start finding players and being sensible and stamping it out. The other thing I'd like to see the AFL do stamp out too is when someone misses a set shot they could have kicked, the opposition player just runs and barrages and bumps into them. You know, the old days, it was actually give them a mouthful, tell them how bad they are so they start thinking about it mentally and question and lose confidence when they're kicked. Running in and barraging by someone or bumping them is just looks stupid. It looks belittling. It doesn't show toughness for the player that's doing it. So I think I'd like to see that stamped out as well. So I think you get back to the first point, Fine. Just start finding players because one thing they do, they're all tight. They don't want to give up money and I guarantee they won't start doing it. And it's a bad look for the game. Yeah, but Treaders, you know, the fines don't work. We've been giving out fines for decades now. They don't seem to work. And I'm not barracking for anyone to miss games. I want to see Tom Lynch play as much as anyone else. But you remember a few years ago that Tom Walkins missed a game, but almost less contact on Phil Davis when they were looking face to face. And it was just a, a, a strike that went across his chin and he got a week for it. Yeah, but that's now, a punch. Tom Lynch, that's a yeah, punch. But, this is an no, open but the a, Yeah, no, no, but the AFL, actually, and we saw with Elliot Yo, and I know that he got awake and then got off, but the AFL has talked about whether it's a clenched fist or an open hand, the striking motion they don't want to see. You're on top of a bloke looking into the back of his head, and it was a pretty for, I know he didn't punch him, but it was a pretty forceful push down. Be really inter- I think it's a really interesting test for the AFL because they're always well, talking well, about, yeah. they're always m- m- making new stances, and we don't want to see this, we don't want to see that. You know, like the, the kids watching that, and I know it's not all about the kids, but you just, I, I didn't like the action. Um, I think Tom Lynch is a wonderful player. It's probably the heat of the moment, but is it a bad look, I reckon, last night? Oh, I, I agree with you, absolutely. But right now, with the way the parameters are, it's a fine. It's not a fist, so it's a fine. But if you want to step it up, I'm all for the AFL sending out an email. They love doing it to all the clubs saying, don't speak about the umpires, go, hey, this is the instance, show the vision, show three or four different examples and go, this is a fine this week, you do it next week, it's a week. I don't care if you're going to miss a grand final, it's a week, stamp out this crap and And stick to it. The problem with the AFL is they don't stick to it. Fair point. You can let us know what you think. At Footy on Nine uh, is the Twitter handle for uh, everything AFL at the Nine Network. Uh, Sam, how are the hubs going? Are, Are players settling in? Are they feeling comfortable? And I guess, how is the AFL feeling about how players are responding? Yeah, the AFL is fed up, to be honest, and they won't want to say that. They're frustrated, they're infuriated, they're angry. Um, there's just so many things going on that um, that shouldn't be going on. And, you know, we've spoken well, on this well, show that, that... Well, I, I think just some of the requests, you know, requests for... Well, uh, for apartments to be uh, altered in some physical yeah, so, way. So there's Requests been a few carpenters putting in walls and yeah. all that. Is that a true allegation? I've heard that. I don't know if it actually happened and the carpenters came, but the requests have certainly have certainly come. Um, so there's also so been requests. There's also been requests for the you AFL to, to put the you put an extra wall in so people can what have separation when they're sleeping. Or what what would the carpenters be doing? 
yeah, I mean, that, that, that was basically to increase privacy. But there's also been requests for the AFL to foot the bill of um, extra orders from Coles Express, even though food's already provided to all the players. Um, you know, players can't be doing that when they would have been paying for their own food if they were living back at home. So we all know that they're making a, 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 an extreme sacrifice and we're all so grateful for that, particularly us in, here in Victoria, because if we didn't have footy, geez, what would we be doing? Um, but, you know, the AFL make no bones about it, have told certain clubs that enough is enough. Let's get on with it. The game is struggling enough as it is. The re- some of the requests are just ridiculous and let's move on. So um, I, think, I think the AFL has made that pretty clear and I think you'll find it's come from the very top. Well, and I think also too, what you might find is you actually want to get a look at this tweet um, a few weeks ago from Steve Adams, a New Zealand NBA basketballer, when they said, oh, how tough is life in hubs? And he actually come out and said, you know, we're not in Syria, guys. We're actually playing basketball and we're staying at Disney World. So I think the AFL players need some perspective. You know, they're the first to put their hands up and win you want extra. You know, what are they paying for at the moment? They're paying for their mortgages and that's Nothing. it. They're not paying yeah. for cost of living. They're actually able to still get paid 50% of their salary. It looks like I'm here and they might not even be deducted next year if we can get through this. Football season's going on. Yes, they're keeping everyone involved, but they're keeping themselves involved too. And I think... As footballers, you lose perspective very quickly how tough life is. You, you might have dropped from 800,000 to 400,000. Well, go and have a look and walk the streets of Melbourne at the moment. Look at the unemployment queues at Centrelink. Good luck and grow up. Very, very fair point. Hey, Sam, we're going to go to school in a second. Professor Treadray has got a lesson oh, no. to give us. That I'm really looking got my ruler. I got my hand. I'm ready. I'm ready, Treaders. <laughs> before we get there, though, it all starts, all roads to this lesson lead to the Adelaide Crows. And if you missed 5AA Adelaide Radio this morning, you missed what was quite clearly some strong words from one of the greatest South Australian footballers of all time. He's a member of our show, Warren Treadway. You can have a look at that there. Matthew Nix under pressure, Adelaide under pressure. Adelaide have got a crap culture. Treaders, you pick it up. Well, at the end of the day, boys, I've heard Taylor Walker talk. I've heard Brodie Smith talk about how good a culture we've got. Um, we're loving each other. The reporters actually question and go, hang on, this is a club that's actually had an, a separate investigation into a people and culture and put in a, full, a full-time person in there, Daniel Jackson, ex-Richmond player, in the role. But I sat back and I watched them play on the weekend against uh, North Melbourne. And let's have a look at where they actually went. They were playing the worst, second-worst team in the comp. They were the worst team. It was their best opportunity to win a game of football. And when you talk culture, don't talk it, live it. And for me, when I looked at what I saw on the weekend, and as harsh as it is, they're a team that lacks culture. You know, some of the key uh, topics I think you need to actually invest in when we're talking about culture is actually bring effort. I mean, culture is about effort, rocking up every week, performing every week, and playing like your life depends on it. Professional standards. I've been told from numerous people out of the Adelaide Football Club, the standards that the the club has actually admitted to, and players have since admitted, saying our standards weren't there. Well, don't talk to me about culture when you can't bring professional standards to a week-to-week basis, because they need that to win games of football. Hence why they sit on the bottom of the ladder. Also, too, work rate. You know, you you go through professionalism, doing this... Let's just bring up the blackboard so people can see what you're going through here because the lesson has started, Sam. So get your pen, get your, uh, get your ruler. I've got my old school ties, so I'm going to put that on uh, for, for, the, for the lesson uh, from Professor Treadray and roll the blackboard now and take us through it. We've done effort. What's next? Well, effort, professionalism. You've got to do the little things, left, right and centre. Like, like, is it your, your recovery? Is it you know, professionals on the football field to actually get the right sleep and diet and all these bits because the challenges are flying fly out for a team that is inexperienced and has the guts cut out of it, let's face it, from a list perspective, are going to be challenges. Elite standards ask what Phil Walsh spoke about when he walked into the Adelaide Football Club all those years ago. I've been told from various players that their standards, and they didn't even admit it in the media, that they haven't had it up to... AFL standard. Well, that can't happen if you expect to win a game of football and you're a professional outfit getting paid hundreds of thousands of dollars a year. If their work rate hasn't been good enough. Their on-field discipline, this is the bit that really gets me. In a game against North Melbourne, how can you rock up in the first quarter and be half asleep? You can actually have a fight. You can actually have a scrap. And when I say a fight, it's not a fist. It's arm on arm. It's you know, winning the ball, throw the ball out in front of two players. And I guarantee you this is for retired players right now and beat Adelaide players in the contest because they simply don't work hard enough. When you've got two players rushing at you, you take out one of the ball carriers. So many times this year, they've tried to intercept the player. Then the defender's dealing with two uncontested players running at them the whole time. And also the unselfishness. 
how many players, and I don't see it often enough, how many players are willing to run flat out to create space for an opposition player or actually go to Shepherd instead of trying to win a ticky touch, a little cheap free kick. So don't talk about culture until you start to willing to live in the culture. And that's my message to Adelaide Footy Club. I love it. Are you fired up, Sam? I think I've got everything. There's my yeah. rule. Yep. No, yeah, lessons perfect. from Please Mr. Treadray. Yeah, <laughs> and, I, and I, I got the margin as well. I never understood the margin at school. What was the margin? No, it felt like no. I was wasting space. I think it was just to show that you were dexterous enough to use a ruler, perhaps. But yeah. uh, now that sums Thank up you, Professor. Nice. Thank you, Professor no Treadray. Um, and before we move on from the Crows, let's just take a look at this. It shows the records of coaches, starting with Brett Ratton, Damien yeah. Hardwick and Mark Neald, who all started their careers 0 and 9. Matthew Nix will join them if, and can, in fact, go 0 and 10 if he loses his next one. Does he get enough of the blowtorch there? Yeah, I, I personally think he does, but I seem to be in the minority there. Um, I, I just think that he hasn't got enough support around him. And I, I don't think he's got a great list, to be honest. I mean, a lot of their really good players are coming towards the end. Um, so, look, I, I just think when he took over, he and the Adelaide Footy Club didn't actually know exactly where they were. And I didn't think that they'd, um, they'd go downhill as quickly as they are. But, look, everyone you talk to at GWS, and I don't know Matthew Nix at all, um, mm. say that one of the reasons they've been struggling this year is because Matthew Nix has left. You know, that he was the tactical mind underneath Leon Cameron, who's a great people's person and a great motivator. Um, but with all the talent that they had, it was Nix who worked out the structures of how they attack and how they go offensively um so uh, i still think that he's a really good footy mind and i hope that he ends up being a good footy coach um Trent is i still think it's too early to be putting huge amounts of blame uh on him but obviously you know winning winning is better than losing and um, they're losing in bad ways at the moment so it makes it tough yeah well, if they can't beat melbourne tonight then the way Melbourne played uh, a w less than a week ago against Port Adelaide, you suggest that they're right for the picking. But he gets away with it. The pressure is starting to come in Adelaide, make no mistake. But let's face it, he stepped into a role where it's too late to recruit any others. He didn't bring anyone with him. So he's inherited the coaching staff, the fitness staff. The club was on its knees. They've traded out key players, got him to the draft. Kids need to play. So he got him at rock bottom. He hasn't really been able to put his imprint on. He hasn't been able to have a full pre-season and preparation to actually train. And even now they can't hit their restricted what they're training. So that hurts his development. But the one reason he's under the pump now in Adelaide, and he's starting to get that way. And don't worry, he's probably got a two-year grace of his three years before you're going to need to show some signs. That's how bad Adelaide are going. Is there effort? Is there professionalism? And is there ability to rock up and compete? Because we're not seeing it enough. And particularly last week, as I touched on against North Melbourne, that was embarrassing. At the moment, he's saying the same things after a game in press conference, questioning their effort, not good enough, we need to learn, we need to be better, but they're not seeing it. And the Adelaide Footy Club is an impatient football club. Every time they've missed the finals for two years, they've sacked their coach. Yep. Sanderson, you know, Robert Shaw, you go back in the history, uh, recently against Don Pike, including Sanderson and Pike with big payouts. It's not gonna come this time, but I'm telling you, they're gonna have to turn it out. But make no mistake, the blowtorch is on the list management and recruiting. Hamish Oak will be Justin Reid and people who work under them. I guarantee you they'll be changing that space because at the moment they've got one, pick one in their hands and they cannot afford to stuff any of that up. And the question, there has been questions. You know, a draft a few years ago, they didn't. They got Paholke in uh, one position. They also got Gallucci out of the draft. They talked about whether yeah, there was internal fighting where they'd gone for Tim English. So there's some challenges, particularly... Um, albeit to a former coach in um, Don Pike, didn't want, want certain types of players. So Adelaide can't afford to mess that up. So Matty Nix has effectively inherited a whole lot. He's going to put his imprint on his coaching department and a few other areas in the off-season, and I think judgment will really come in 2021. Let's move on to this. Uh, Mitch Cleary, journalist with the AFL media operation uh, run by AFL House, Stood down after he tweeted a uh, Instagram story that Brooke Cotchin, the partner of Trent Cotchin, had already published herself. It was obviously a breach of COVID regulations. Uh, and eventually the AFL reinstated him with a message that the AFL media outfit had agreed not to name Cotchin and that Mitch broke the rules by posting that Instagram story. Sam, has the AFL done the right thing by reinstating Mitch? Oh, yeah, they've righted their own wrong. Um, <laughs> you know, later than they should have, but I guess... 
they should be uh, applauded for that. But it was a ridiculous decision to do it in the first place. I think everyone here knows um, my feelings on this. It's you, you can't suppress journalistic integrity and you can't actually stand someone down for reporting the truth. There was no editorial decision that anyone else at AFL.com was aware of. Um, the AFL did a deal with the clubs not to name them, which is fine. I can understand that. And that's the AFL's prerogative. But if you then don't go tell your journalists, um, I'm not sure how you can actually stand someone down for um, for not breaking any rules. But it was a ridiculous decision. Um, I think they should be embarrassed for it. But Seb, I'm actually keen to get your perspective on it as, um, as a genuine independent newsman um, that is, you know, semi-removed from sport. How did you look at this from afar and, and analyse it? Well, I'm going to zag from you, Sam. I think the AFL did the wrong thing by reinstating him. Uh, if Mitch wants to go out here behaving like a real journalist, breaking a legitimate story with real consequences, then there's no room for that at AFL House. Everybody knows that. The AFL media is not there to be run to break legitimate stories. He should, he should really take a hard look at himself and figure out what he stands for. No, of course I'm taking the P1S5 there. But it is a sort of, uh, I think we all found out what happens at AFL House in relation to the media unit and how the bosses see it. Nothing against the journos who work there, but clearly the bosses see it as something yep. different to the mainstream media athletes. And uh, I, I think for someone like Mitch, who has a crack and does a great job, there'll be a lot of jobs out there waiting for him. But there was a bit yeah, of sarcasm what, there, Seb, but clearly, <laughs> but clearly the sarcasm you talk about is the issue they yep. face. For a long sure. period of time, afl.com.au pitched themselves as a genuine media outlet, which they are, but they are compromised. And, yep. and anyone who's now working there, and if you want to be a Mitch Cleary or a Damien Barrett or whoever wants to work there, and you want to be able to break the big story, it doesn't say that you can do it now in-house. No. Yeah. Really. So think, you're going to have to look for really... if you want to like like Sam. If you were working there, you'd have to look for another job because if you want to be yeah. a newsbreaker and you want to be independent and want to call City Hall out for what you think is right or wrong, you can't work there, can you? Yeah, I, I just think it's. I think you guys have hit the nail on the head. I think it's really sad for the journo's that work there because, um, you know, I know a lot of them to be such great reporters and I you know specifically look for certain bylines you know it's not just Mitch it's Damien Barrett it's Mark McGowan who's announced himself as a really good yep. newsbreaker it's Nat Edwards it's Riley Beveridge you know like you could just continue to go on and I read their stuff knowing that everything they're writing is correct and factual so that's that's not going to impact me what's happened but just moving forward now I'm starting to think is there someone there with a big story that isn't allowed to go with it but that will always be in the back of my head. So, um, yeah, I, I just hope that people continue to read the great work of those journos and I hope they continue to get work. Well said, exactly. And it's a lot of jobs. So, you know, there are people who deserve jobs and I'm glad they can find yep. them somewhere. Um, let's move on to our sure things. Everyone got them right last week, which means the ladder stays as it Woo! is. I am on a hot streak here. Uh, Trent oh, is what did you just say? Who what? Whoa, 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 whoa. He's on, on a hot, hot streak. streak. I'm on a hot streak. I am. Look at the ladder. Look at the ladder. <laughs> Number one, you bow. Can you, Sam? I think it's time, cares about your it's time for a celebration. <laughs> yeah, bow. Oh, um, cool. Those ones. Just, yeah. I don't want to. All right. My bowing. Are you, <laughs> if you're such on a hot streak, yep. let's change it up. You get first pick, but mm. you've got to pick a difficult one. Uh, well, is the Cats tonight a difficult one? I think the Cats will beat the Roos. No, no, that's not oh, a difficult please. one. You're not having oh, that. You're not having please. that. <laughs> no, all right, we'll do it this way. Sam? Yep. Yeah. You you wait. Sam, who do you want? Okay. Uh, I <laughs> will take the Pies to beat the Swans. All right. I will take Melbourne to beat the Crows. Oh, and Seb, Seb, you cannot pick the Cats to beat North. You have to yeah, pick something fair. else. Yeah, uh, you've got to either pick the Saints or you've got to pick the Giants or one of the games league? at the start of next week. Can we go back to the tape and see how many times Warren has picked whoever's playing Adelaide? Yeah, it's probably <laughs> a fair bit. There's, there's, mate, mate, I see him a lot. I see Adelaide a lot. It's not a lot of victory on there. Yeah, got, um, no, got all right, I will take... Well, yeah, I think the Saints can beat the Suns. I do. So I'll take uh, Brett Ratton and Co. Good. And you can bang on... If you get that right, bang on about it next week. <laughs> I'll be barracking so hard for Gold Coast. This is <laughs> <laughs> this is I'm going to tip the Gold Coast after that. Professor Warren Treadray, four-time All-Australian and Premiership champion, thank you for your time. Thank you very much.
Now, Sam, if you could just find a, um, uh, a little person that looks a bit like Warren that we can invite on the show next week to be the mini me uh, for Dr. Eve, <laughs> I reckon that would be fantastic. It was like finding a bald kid. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Professor. <laughs>